Hello everyone, my name is Oquandia and today I'm going to be taking you guys on a journey with me and using the Electronic Studio Pro platform to use some web automation factors. Today in this example, I'm going to be pulling some contents from the web and creating them into variables. And I'm going to be taking those variables and doing a little bit with them. We're going to definitely explore to see what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look in. To go ahead and start, I'm going to go ahead and use my web automation. Going into my web automation, I'm going to start with my web browser because the first thing I want to do is the open URL. What this is going to do is open up a URL to that specific page that you have been specified. I then want to go in and use a bit of the UI automation to get some of that element value, or you're even able to go in and get element properties if need be. For the cases of this video, I'm going to be getting the element value. So let's go ahead and fill in these parameters here. So to start off, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my web page. The web page that I'm going to be using is just a random article on RPA use cases in retail and consumer processing goods industry. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my URL and I'm going to paste that URL here. Now that I have that URL pasted, I'm going to go ahead and start picking my elements that I want to choose from this page. So I'm going to go ahead and hit pick new element. What this is going to do, it's going to give me a outline of all of the objectives and elements that I'm able to select. So in this case, I want to get the title of the article. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control X. I'm going to go in and name my element. I'm going to name it article title. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And as you can see, you'll see what I've selected right there in that tab. It has also saved that value to a variable being the web element value. I'm going to go in and change the name of this value here because I wanted to specify what I've gathered from that element. So again, I'm going to name this article title. I'm going to ensure to put it in a variable form so I'm able to use this information throughout my workflow. Now I'm going to go in and get element value for another piece of information regarding that web page. And just to organize this in a neater fashion, I'm going to go ahead and hit my auto layout. And I also want to turn on my grid lines here. So now let's go in and pick that next element. And the next element that I want to gather is the subtitle. So I'm going to go ahead and outline that and hit Control X. And I'm going to name that subtitle. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. I'm going to go in and change the name of the variable that I've created. And this is going to be Article Subtitle. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my get element value again, and I'm going to select another piece of information. And now for this piece of information, I want to gather all of the use cases that are within this subtitle. So I'm going to hit control X. I'm going to name this use cases. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to change the name of my variable to use cases. Now that I have the name of that variable there, I want to go ahead and start running this flow so I can plug some information. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this out here. And what I want to do after I get my URL opened is I want to go in and wait a few seconds after. As we know with some web pages, it takes a second to go ahead and load. So I'm going to have this wait for about five seconds after and then continue moving on to the next step. So let's go ahead and run this workflow now. As you can see, it opened up my URL tab. 
to the page in which I would actually like to pull information from. Down there in the right hand corner, you can see my status of the bot runner. This is telling me what's going on with my workflow. Now that the workflow has been completed, I'm gonna go down here to see what exactly happened. So we see the bot finished successfully. It took 20 seconds. All right, so let's go ahead here and see what content it pulled to the variables tab. And as you can see here, it pulled those use cases. It also pulled the article subtitle as well as the article title. So let's go ahead and see how we can plug this information in different places. What I want to do with this information is I want to get this information populated to me in a different manner. If I wanted to go in and use some of the logic factors and get this information populated in a console log, I can do that here by adding console log to the bottom and I go in and define the parameters within my console log. I'm going to calculate a value since we already have our variables here. In the console log, let's see what information we would like to have shown. I would like to have the article subtitle, as well as the use cases. And I would like for that information to be shown below in my console log down here. So now let's go ahead and run that workflow and see the information that gets populated below to the console log. The information should match the information that's presented in the variables under use cases and article title, article subtitle, excuse me. Let's run that workflow now. Again, we can see our bot runner popped up with our status of what's going on. We are now opening that web page and pulling that information. Awesome. Now let's open our console log here. And as you can see here, it has populated our title as well as our use cases. You are able to go in and edit the format in which this is shown. I just ran this together as an example. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our Electronic Studio Pro platform project. I would love to see what you guys are able to automate with Electronique. Thank you.